going to be looking at uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, uh, what advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there in of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. What if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. This is what we need to understand, let God be true, but every man a liar. You know, we can fully trust what God says in his word, the Bible, but the Bible is the word of God. We need to understand that, but, uh, you know, we can read books, and that's okay, uh, books by man, but obviously, it, if we read fiction books, we can take it with a pinch of salt, because it's uh, just not true. The point is this, the word of God is absolute truth. There's no truth apart from the word of God, really. No absolute truth. This is where we should be gauging what is right and wrong in this world. It shouldn't be what man, you know, says and what they legalise and all that sort of thing. It's a load of rubbish, you know, it can be good and it can be bad. But uh, we must understand that God sets the rules and we tend to go ahead and break those rules. Just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they had broken the rule that God had made. He said, do not partake of this particular tree. And they went ahead and did it. And so therefore, they sinned against the Lord. They rebelled against God, and God, you know, God sees sin a lot worse than you and I see sin. You and I think very little of sin, but the point is this, God is very really offended by our sin. And we see that for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, that's what we deserve, that's what we get, we earn those wages. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so the only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says here, the oracles of God were given unto the Jews, for what if some did uh, not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. For if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? This is another proof that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. Because the Bible says that, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so this is what we need to understand. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. God manifest in the flesh. One of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To think that God came down in the person of Jesus Christ with, was clothed with a sinless body, that in that body he by the grace of God should face death for every man. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So he tasted death for you and for me, so that you and I don't have to go into eternal torment. But that will only take place for you, you will only be saved if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, if you receive him as your saviour. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him for then gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So it's all a matter of faith. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. There's no way that he can be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he wants. He wants you to be saved. He wants your soul to be saved. He wants to save you right now, this hour. If never before you put your faith in Christ, you need to come to Christ while there's still time and opportunity. Time is running out. We don't know when we're going to leave this earth. You know, even if you're a young person, you might get hit 
you know, bowled over by a car and killed. We don't know. Before this day is over, you might be in eternity. We don't know that. Only God knows that. And so this is why we must prepare to meet God. That's what the Bible says. Prepare to meet thy God. So people think to fall into the hands of the living God, yet God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then, are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now we might think we're pretty good living people, but the point is this, when we measure ourselves to God's perfect standard, we're far less than what we should be. And so this is why we need to understand that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. God's uh, standard is absolute perfection. And the only one who can measure up to that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did just that. He lived a perfect life that you and I could never ever live on, uh, when he was on the earth. Then he died the perfect sacrificial death upon the cross to take our place as the divine substitute that took our place on the cross so that you and I could be saved. God wants you to be saved. He wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. The only way you can do that is through the sacrifice, the only sacrifice, one and only sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. All we have is self-righteousness, which is not worth a trumpet as far as God is concerned. He's not interested in that. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God. And we all do fade as does a leaf. So we need to understand that our righteousness is absolutely useless. It can't get us into heaven. We need the righteousness of God given unto us the moment we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You will receive the righteousness of God by faith in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You know, some people say that I'm good or it's all good and all this sort of thing, but really, there is not none that are, are good, as God says in his word, the Bible. We need to understand our sinfulness before the Lord. We're all under sin. We've been floored by sin. We have not got a leg to stand on, so to speak, as far as God is concerned. This is why we need the righteousness of God given unto us as a free gift the moment we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive the righteousness of God by faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used to see it. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, that is, in God's sight. In other words, by doing good things, we cannot get to heaven. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we need to understand that there's no way that we can get to heaven in and of ourselves. We need to come to Jesus Christ. We need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law was given so that we might see where we go wrong. So that we can measure ourselves up with a few of God's standards. Thou shalt not do this and thou shalt do this. You know, we need to measure ourselves up and see that we fall pathetically short of what God demands of you and I. See, before sin came into the world, Adam and Eve were perfect in that, in that sense. They had not sinned. But once sin came in, of course, they ceased to be in that perfect situation. And so therefore, we have, uh, we have blown it, to use the term, because of our sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. We can see where we've gone wrong. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. You see, this gospel message goes out unto the whole world. But you will only benefit from this gospel message if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe upon him, if you receive him as your saviour, well then you can receive forgiveness for your sins and you, you will enter into heaven the moment you die. But if you do not believe on him, if you reject or neglect him, it will mean at the moment of death you'll be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why we come here, Disargo, as gospel preachers, to bring you the message of salvation so that you'll have another opportunity of getting right with God and receiving forgiveness for your sins through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Yes, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And you know, when something is redeemed, it's brought back by a price that's been paid. We have the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon the cross when He was crucified for you and for me. Then when they came and saw that He was dead already, one of the soldiers came and crossed a spear into his side and forthwith there came out blood and water. That blood still has the power to wash your sins away, my friend. And that's exactly what God wants to do for you, this Arvo. He wants to wash your sins away. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. What a wonderful thing it is to know that your sins have been forgiven and you are on your way to heaven. And it's all through the finished work of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. So you can be saved this afternoon if you put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yes, being justified uh, freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that is God's righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. That's what you need to do. You need to believe in Jesus. Now, what does Jesus mean? It means Jehovah the Saviour or the salvation of Jehovah. God has provided salvation. You and I cannot get to heaven by any man-made religion. They're worse than useless, my friend. They've taken countless millions of people down to hell because they thought that by doing good things they could outweigh the bad things they do in their life and God will let them into heaven. It won't work that way. 
Otherwise, the Lord Jesus Christ died in vain. He wasted his time coming down to earth and being the sacrifice upon the cross, and that's definitely not the case. He had to come. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Yes, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. He is the only one that can save your precious soul. You have a soul that needs to be saved. Yet you are very valuable in God's sight. He doesn't want you to go down to hell. But that's exactly where we're headed without Jesus Christ. Without him, we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins, heading for hell and the lake of fire for eternity. God forbid that any of you would pass out into eternity without Christ. Make a wise choice this hour, my friend. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. And as we know, the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And so God, this afternoon, wants to save your soul, my friend. And that's why I'm here this hour, though. God is giving you another opportunity of getting right with Him, of receiving forgiveness for your sins, so that you can enter into heaven the moment you die. If you die without Jesus Christ, you'll be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.